Here at Toolbox Buzz, our testing criteria and parameters have always been focused on ensuring apples to apples comparisons. We departed from this model on this test for a few key reasons. First of all, tool manufacturers are truly innovating. They're not duplicating each other anymore. Trying to match tools in an apples to apples format limits our ability to really give you a good sense of what's out there and how it all stacks up. So we wanted to give you a solid understanding of the performance of high capacity batteries paired with top of the line cordless circular saws available on the market today. Each saw manufacturer gave us their best saw, best battery. We paired them. Best foot forward guys. Right now, here right now, what's available now? So we looked at six and a half and seven and a quarter inch blade diameters. We looked at 18 to 36 volt batteries. We looked at single to double packs and we looked at 3.9 to 9.0 amp hour batteries. For a full list of all nine saws that we looked at, you need to read the article at toolboxbuzz.com. So although that we gave up on the apples to apples comparisons on the saws themselves, we did control for stock blade variability. And so we used the Diablo 24 inch 24 tooth framing blade on all the saws. We also leveled the field by looking at these tools with two batteries versus one. And I'll get into why we did that later. We distinguished the smaller six and a half saws as trim saws and the, the larger seven and a quarter saws as framing saws. Two categories, winners in both. First thing we did is we looked at blade change. Got to put the blade on the tool, right? No real clear standouts in all nine saws, really. Although on the blade change for the trim saw, the winner was Makita. Makita eked out ahead of those other saws, the six and a half saws, and best in class blade change because the onboard storage for the Allen wrench was better placed and more secure than the competition. And ultimately this was the, the only feature that put Makita just slightly ahead of the six and a half inch Milwaukee fuel. The fuels on board Allen wrench popped out too easily and we all felt that it was too threatening to get lost. It was too much of a risk and it popped out uh, once while we were testing. The blade change winner on the framing saw was the DeWalt Flexvolt. In the, in the framing category, the key discriminator for this was the onboard storage wrench. It's a half inch wrench, which is an industry standard on most seven and a quarter inch saws. This feature made the blade change much more convenient as it obviously generates more torque being a wrench versus an Allen wrench. And um, those dinky Allen wrenches they don't work that well. And, and we liked how the, the, the wrench also stored underneath with, near the base. Coincidentally, all of the other framing saws provided Allen wrenches. Flexvolt was the only one with the wrench. Ergonomics. The ergonomics of the saw is difficult to evaluate objectively. And we don't pretend that our say is the end all be all for this category. We had seven experienced contractors and carpenters put their hands on these saws and run them through tests. It's a simple but fair process of elimination and we selected a winner. You may or may not agree with us. Our ergonomics winner for trim was the Bosch. The feel and balance of a tool has a major impact on our assessment of ergonomics. Our crew showed a preference for the Bosch's handle, the grip. It has a more vertical, uh, more vertical orientation and this handle orientation results in the user pushing the saw right through the material. It's just a real nice line. Everything's lined up. It, it just feels good. As far as the framing saw, we picked the Makita. The size, the weight, and the balance of this tool was a crew favorite. The Makita saw is another example of that push style grip and although it's not as vertical as the Bosch, regardless, not only did the weight and feel of this tool impress the crew, rounding out at just over 12 pounds, it's kind of a heavy saw, but the comfort and ease during operation was impressive. We kept hearing the word smooth associated with the Makita. And like I said, despite being that, the heaviest saw in this group, the crew almost unanimously called out Makita for its feel during use. Bevel. We talked about bevel settings and we looked at those. A bevel, a bevel scale that allows users to quickly set and verify common bevel settings is key. Performance indicators in this category is, is, is ease of use. Quick and, and fast ease of use. The winner 
was Makita on the trim side. Makita employs a simple but effective method to set the saw's bevel from uh, 0 to 45 degrees and also to max out at 50. The tool, much like its bigger brother, features a very simple stop dial. The adjustment allows the user to basically turn that dial, which bottoms out the bevel gauge at 45 degrees. So if you're doing 45 all the time, you just have that dial set. When it's not maxed, when it's not set, it will max out at 50 degrees. This feature combined with the raised black on white bevel gauge made the Makita a best in class choice. We then looked at the framing saws, bevel setting winner. And that was the rigid. Now the rigid seven and a quarter saw has an impressive bevel adjustment design. The, uh, the discriminators in this category were ease of angle setting and visibility. So rigid framing saw basically includes all the detents that we're used to using for speed and precision setting, but it also has a really easy to see white on magnesium painted dial, which clearly dominated in this particular category. We then went on to depth setting. Our team all agreed that depth setting is really best left to a quick adjustment on the material that you're going to cut. We all do that. But still, we wanted, there, there is something to be said about a gauge that can quickly and accurately set the depth of the saw, even approximately. And you want it to be easy to read. So often, tools fail to accurately denote where the scale on the saw is set. So this made our job easier to determine best in class in this category, actually in both categories. Both uh, Milwaukee trim and framing saws, the fuels, took the winner in this category. The scales for both depth of cut were, were a favorite for all of us. And it basically, uh, it faces the operator on the blade guard. And additionally, there's a duplicate scale on the motor side. The bonus feature for this is that the fuel saw includes a little red mark. It's like an indicator mark that really stands out to the eye. So all you're going to do is look for that red mark and you know exactly where the setting is. As far as sight lines, cut lines, you can expect great performance if you can see your line. If you can't, you're not going to be cutting your line. Nothing's going to kill your productivity more than swapping sight back and forth on your saw to see where the blade is and where your line is. So in this category, we focused on how well users can see the blade during cutting operations, both um, blade and motor side. Um, straight line cut winner was the Makita. The Makita saw has exceptionally executed features across the board, so it was no surprise to us that the sight lines on this tool are great. The guard on both the blade and the motor side are actually relieved a little bit and it creates almost like a window so the user can actually see in it and track the blade across the workpiece. Visibility from the motor side is always a challenge with these saws and Makita did a really good job at keeping that line of sight open. The sight line winner for framing was the DeWalt FlexVolt. The DeWalt FlexVolt circular saw has clean and clear sight lines. Real nice saw to operate. It's, it easily took the best in class for straight line on the framing saws. Value. Value is a fun topic. Value is not the cheapest tool, but the tool that delivers exceptional performance for its price. So th this head to head is a Frankenstein combination of components from tools to high capacity batteries to different types of high capacity chargers. So we're seeing higher price tags than off the shelf kits that you're used to buying. This would be kits that you would put yourself together. You'd have to piecemeal this. So we break down value in our Toolbox Buzz article with a very cool chart. So you need to check it out. And because one of the Makita saws has two batteries, in, in order to operate the saw, you need to have those two batteries. So we felt it was best to level the playing field by using two battery pack basis for cost across the board. And that was to see how much work could be accomplished with every saw with two battery packs. So we took a winner. The, the winner on the trim saw was the Bosch. The Bosch CCS 180 had exceptional ergonomics, a decent runtime, and a reasonable price, all separately purchased components, obviously, but it made this the winner for our trim category. Although this is an older model, it still displays good performance. And like I said, it's well priced. You can expect to pay around $347 for this for the tool, a 6.0 amp hour battery, and a loose charger. The winner for the framing saw was the DeWalt. 
This category is typically dominated by Rigid due to its aggressive pricing and quality performance. They came close this time, but the real winner here is the new Dewalt Flexvolt because it's priced just below $400. This is the only saw that we tested that came in, a, came as a true kit, saw, charger, and two batteries. But with the disruption of the Flexvolt's line, the line, the new system, it's a big ask for people especially if you're a tw uh, 20 volt DeWalt user. Although the Flexvolt batteries are backwards compatible, DeWalt is still upsetting the Apple cart by introducing a new line of tools no longer useful to users invested in that 20 volt platform. With all that said, DeWalt needs to entice those users to bridge the new battery platform. Either way, the DeWalt offers a very powerful tool currently supporting 60 volt 2.0 amp hour battery with plenty of room to run at a great price. Then we looked at erg, um, in, endurance. Um, at the end of the day, a cordless saw is only as good as its primary function, cutting. And with a finite amount of cuts in energy stored in a cordless battery, endurance means a lot to these tools. So we address the endurance test with two key philosophies. One test the tool, basically, we, we tested in a realistic application at a realistic pace. Two, we're not a laboratory, so we don't sweat every variable, although we do strive to create a realistic environment where the tool is assessed fairly. So one of the different or difficult choices for this test was how to fairly compare the Makita double battery tool to the rest of the field. We struggled with this, but in the end, we felt that it was very important to compare these tools based on the same number of batteries. The thought here is that you buy two batteries for each tool, uh, and uh, for each one of these tools. And we wanted to see how much work you can accomplish on two fully charged packs. This isn't perfect, we realize that, but it's important to the total story. If you own the Makita, and you plan on working all day long, you'll likely need four battery packs at a minimum. The rest of the saws can likely work the whole day on two packs. So you need to consider that. That's all we're trying to do here. We tested these saws by cross-cutting an inch and three quarter by 11 and seven inch, seven eighths inch LVLs. Totally brutal test, but it really points how well these tools perform on tough job site tasks. All of these tools used one pack while the Makita needed two. The number of cuts were doubled for the other saws um, for the single battery saws so that we could compare the double pack of that Makita. As far as the endurance test winner on the trim saw, Milwaukee took that category. Both Milwaukee saws run the same size motor, so the smaller saw does the deliver a little bit additional endurance given the efficiency it gains from additional rotations and less friction of a smaller blade. In the trim category, the fuel dominated the competition by cutting 73% more than the next two saws. The endurance test for the framing saw was the Milwaukee. The Milwaukee fuel, well, first of all, I would say the framing category was probably the most interesting one and definitely a category that we struggled with. If you pick up any of these saws with the batteries that are attached to them, the Makita wins easily. The Makita win won that test. But that comes at a serious price of having to have two fully charged batteries properly operating battery packs to get the saw going. While working with the saw, you need to be charging two more battery packs in order to keep the saw in line all day. So when we normalize the competition by looking at total cuts for two packs, the DeWalt Flexvolt and the Milwaukee Fuel blow away the other saws. The Milwaukee again crushed the competition with 25% more cuts than the second place finisher, the DeWalt Flexvolt. Some of you might find this very interesting if you're just thinking about voltage, but voltage isn't the entire story. It's really a story about energy stored in the battery pack, the motor, and the electronics, and it all combines to do the work that we need to get it done. So battery, let's talk a little bit about those battery packs, comparing the battery packs. Considering that we stacked the competition with a myriad of motor types, battery voltage, battery amps, 
amp hours, and blade sizes, it's impossible to, to, to normalize the saws to be compared fairly, right? The bottom line, the tools are just too different. We can, ex we can assess the efficiency of the saws by, by calculating the watt hours per battery pack and comparing this metric to overall number of cuts. This, is simply, this essentially gives you an idea of how efficient the tool really is. In the Toolbox Buzz article, that we wrote, we break down potential watt hours for each of the tools with those battery packs. You really want to read the article. It's important because there's more information in the article than this video. That chart shows a huge difference in the potential battery pack energy that each of these tools has. And what's more interesting is that energy is used, how that energy is used to do the work. Total watt hours doesn't necessarily mean more work. We also graphed cuts per watt hour. Cuts per watt hour is an interesting way to evaluate how efficient the SAR is at using that battery energy. Watt hours per cut, cuts per watt hour, tells us how well the combination of battery, motor, and electronics are delivering power to the saw when you're doing your cutting applications. So why all this technical stuff, right guys? I mean, my head's spinning thinking about it. The, amp, the answer really is simple if you think about this, the performance of these saws is based on several things, including voltage, including battery size, including the motor type, brush, brushless, and all the electronics that, that control it. While the Makita has the most potential energy when two batteries are running, it's one of the least efficient at how many cuts it can make with that energy. Most of that is due to the fact that it's a brushed motor while the others are using brushless motors. Can you just imagine how well the Makita would have done if it were brushless? And I'm sure that's coming. I'm, I'm, I'm positive it's probably coming. The FlexVolt does a very impressive job at utilizing the full capacity of the battery pack. It's powerful, right? With the most cuts per watt hour. Bottom line, you cannot judge a cordless tool solely on its voltage battery battery pack size, amp hours, or number of batteries. You can't. You've got to look at the whole picture. When naming the overall best-in-class saw, we consider all the features and the categories, right? So our trim saw, we picked the Milwaukee, the 2730-21, paired with a nine amp hour battery. So the 2730-21 was a surprise to us during the endurance test to our crew. Both the six and a half inch saw and the seven and a quarter saws share the same motor, and we were shocked that this saw kept cutting well, well past the other saws in the category. The number one overall performance in our endurance test, coupled with these high end features and excellent design, made it an easy choice for best in class trim saw. That's our six and a half. Our overall best in class framing saw, well, that was tougher to choose. There's, a, there's three saws that really come to mind, but th this was basically the toughest call we've had to make. The top three saws in this category are easily DeWalt, Makita, and Milwaukee. All three of these saws are beasts and definitely able to perform any task that we traditionally would need with a corded saw. That's probably the best thing I can say right off the bat. We still have to pick a winner. The Makita quite possibly could win this entire thing if it was updated with a brushless motor. Sure, there are plenty of guys out there that simply don't want to deal with the dual battery saw. I get that, but the performance is tough to ignore. So we gave the Makita a second runner up. It came in second because of that, the dual batteries. The battle for the overall best in class is pretty much a tie in our minds with only the, the slight edge to Milwaukee. Let's talk a little bit about the DeWalt FlexVolt first. It was impressive and powerful. It's definitely the most powerful circular saw that we've ever tested. With a larger battery pack coming soon, nine amp hours, it will probably have even longer runtime as well. So that's something to think about. We think this saw certainly could benefit from a rafter hook. And probably the biggest issue we have is the fact that you can't use the other DeWalt battery packs with the FlexVolt. So that dinged it and probably that's why it, that lowered a little bit. Overall, best in class 
framing saw goes to Milwaukee Fuel there, 2731-20. The runtime of the saw when combined with a nine amp hour high demand battery pack is truly amazing. At the end of the day, the decision to go cordless means finding a solution that allows you to work as long as possible on a charge. What's most impressive about this tool is its ability to work on every single 18 volt battery pack that Milwaukee offers. You can grab any battery pack you own, you can throw it on the saw, keep working. For guys that are invested significantly, a significant amount of money into a platform, that's a huge consideration. It is for me. Lastly, this is a proven saw that we've used in the field for quite some time and it performs flawlessly. I'm Rob Robillard. Please take a look at the full article at toolboxbuzz.com and subscribe to this channel. We need your support. Have a great day.